From childhood, I lived in the mountain and didn't see much of the world. After I married, I had two lovely sons. They were both obedient and sensible at an early age, and my husband worked hard for the family. I often felt happy for having such a harmonious family. In 1996, I suddenly had a serious illness, so I began to believe in Jesus. From then on, I often read the Bible and actively attended meetings. My illness got better gradually, and I had greater faith. However, I had never expected that in 1999, I was arrested by the police for believing in Jesus and was detained for 24 hours. They imposed on me a charge more serious than murderers, taking part in the counter-revolutionary organization. Moreover, they told my whole family that as long as I believed in God, in the future, even if my son entered the university and graduated, they wouldn't get a job. Just because of a word of the government, my husband, parents, relatives, and friends all began to attack me and persecute me. Thus, I became a sinner in my family. They asked me to do all the hard and tiring work, and I had to endure it silently. In 2003, I fortunately accepted Almighty God's end-time work. I was very excited in my heart that I could meet the incarnated God. Later, the cops from the Public Security Bureau came to my house and scolded me in front of my family. Do you know that you have broken the law in believing in God? You're opposing the state and the government. If you continue believing, you'll be sentenced to imprisonment. After my husband heard those words, he persecuted me more fiercely. One day, when I was on my way home after preaching the gospel, I met a relative. Seeing me, she said nervously, Don't go home. The cops went to your house to arrest you. They went there several times in a day. It was lucky that you were not at home. They said that you preached everywhere and didn't do good things. And your husband said that he would break your legs when he saw you. Hearing those words, I was very distressed in my heart, and tears kept raining down. I thought, why doesn't my husband even understand me? Is it that I won't be able to go home for the rest of my life? Having no choice, I could only fight my inner agony and leave my family and hometown, so as to escape the government's arrest. At that time, I only hated my family for not understanding me, but had no knowledge of the one behind that brought me the misery of being isolated from my family and hometown. It was not until after experiencing a prison life that I had some true knowledge of the CCP government substance and saw clearly that it is the root of all kinds of evil that destroys people's happy families and brings them so many disasters. It was on December 16, 2012. Five brothers and sisters and I were preaching the gospel in a square. I saw two police cars driving fast forward, and four cops got out and ran fast toward us. Before we realized what was happening, a sister and I were arrested by the cops. After I was taken to the police station, the cops handcuffed me and cursed. How dare you escape? If you try to run away, I'll break your legs. I tell you, whether you steal or rob, murder or set fire or prostitute yourself, we don't care. But your believing in God is opposing the CCP. You deserve a beating. After a fierce beating, I felt that I could hardly hold on. Then I kept calling to God in my heart. Oh God, I don't know how long these devils will torture me. I can hardly hold on. 
May you care for and keep me and lead me. After the prayer, inspired by the Holy Spirit, I remembered a hymn of God's Word. In the last days, I should bear testimony for God. No matter how difficult, I must do my best to live. And no matter how great the sufferings, I should walk to the end. Even if I have just one breath left, I should be faithful to God. This is truly loving God, and this is a strong and resounding testimony. God's words gave me strength. I made a firm resolution inwardly. Even if I have one breath left, I'll be faithful to God, fight against Satan to the end, and stand testimony to satisfy God once. Afterward, a cop searched out 230 yuan for me. He grinned hideously. This money is loot and should be confiscated. While saying that, he stuffed the money into his pocket and kept it for himself. After that, the evil cops began to interrogate me. Where are you from? What's your name? Who sent you to this place? Show me your ID. After learning my name and address, they soon found out the information about my whole family and the computer. I refused to answer the other questions they asked. Then they got more than 10 unbelievers on the street to identify me. Those people gave me sneering looks. All kinds of curses, mocks, and slanders were mixed together. Seeing them laughing and abusing, I felt very mistreated and very weak in my heart. Not knowing how to experience that environment, I could only keep crying to God in my heart, asking Him to give me faith and strength. Before I came to myself, one of the evil cups suddenly hung a sign around my neck on which was written cult and took photos of me. Then he had me squat down and point my finger at the gospel materials and took some photos. At that time, my legs were so painful that I could hardly squat down. Right then, my cell phone rang. I was startled. It must be a brother or a sister. Never get them into trouble. Immediately, I grabbed the phone and threw it hard on the floor. The phone broke. My action infuriated those evil cops right away. They seized me by the collar and lifted me up. They slapped me several times so violently that my face ached as if being burned by fire. My ears buzzed and then couldn't hear anything. They kicked my legs hard and I ached terribly. However, the evil cops still felt dissatisfied. Then they dragged me into a dark room, had me stand against the wall and slapped my face violently. They kicked and struck me, but my ears couldn't hear what they were cursing. I held back my tears, but my heart was extremely distressed. I prayed to God silently. Oh, Almighty God, I believe that there is your good purpose in all this. All that you do is good. No matter how you manipulate, I'm willing to obey. This suffering is what I should undergo. May your will be done. Unexpectedly, after I prayed, my ears suddenly could hear. I heard an evil cop saying, This woman is too stubborn. She hasn't dropped a single tear or let out a cry. She hasn't felt the pain. Bring an electric baton to shock her. See if she cries. Another evil cop brought the electric baton and violently jabbed my thighs. I staggered and fell to the floor and banged my head against the wall. Then blood streamed down from my head. Those evil cops pointed at me and roared, Drop the act! Get up! Give you three minutes! If you don't get up, I'll go on beating you! Wanna play dead? No matter how the evil cops shouted, I really couldn't move. 
In the end, the evil cop stopped after they savagely kicked my legs and waist for a while. Under such inhuman tortures, I really couldn't hold on. I hurried to pray to God. Oh, almighty God, my flesh is very weak and I can hardly stand it. May you give me faith and strength. When I was extremely distressed, a hymn of God's word rang in my ears. Since you believe in God, you should present your heart before God. If you offer up your heart and present it before God, then you will surely not deny God in refining. One day, when God's trial suddenly comes upon you, you will not only be able to stand on God's side, but will also be able to bear testimony for God. At that time, you will be like Job and like Peter. As you have borne testimony for God, you will be a person who truly loves God and a person who willingly lays down his life, and you will be God's witness. Only a refined love will be strong, not fragile. No matter when and how God tries you, if you can give no thought to your life and willingly give up everything for God and endure everything for God, your love will be pure and your faith will have reality. Only at that time will you be a person truly loved by God and a person truly perfected by God. A person perfected by God. Inspired by God's words, I understood God's will. I prayed to God. Oh, Almighty God, I believe that today everything I encounter is out of your permission. Now I see clearly that the law enforcement agency under the CCP system is an agency of violence. I'm willing to give my heart to you and present it before you. Oh God, I know that only after I experience such a trial and refining can my heart of loving you be stronger. It's my honor that I, a created being, can bear testimony for you. After the prayer, I was so moved in my heart, feeling that everything that came upon me was meaningful. God's words gave me infinite faith and strength. About over 10 minutes later, a female cop got me up and said hypocritically, You're at such an age. Your child is in college. Is it worthy? If you tell, you can get out immediately. You see, you dress like a beggar. What's the good for you? Seeing that I didn't have any reaction, she continued. As a mother, you should think about your son. This matter will influence several generations of your family. As for your sons and your grandchildren, in the future needless mention of joining the army, being promoted as cadres, or being public servants, even being security guards is impossible. Do you want them to do hard labor and do odd jobs and live a poor life like you when they grow up? Just when Satan was carrying out the scheme, God's words appeared within me. You must watch and wait at any moment and be before me more. See through all kinds of intrigues and schemes of Satan. Know the spirit and people and know how to discern various kinds of people, matters, and things. The inspiration of God's words made me see through Satan's scheme. I knew that they were threatening me with my children's future. But I knew that man's destiny is not in his hand, nor in their hands, but in God's hand. I wasn't in the least restrained by them in my heart. The guidance of God's words made me truly feel that God was with me. And I had firmer faith in God. It was getting dark. When they sent the sister and me to the city detention house, it was past 1 a.m. 
there was a gate made of lines of iron sticks before my eyes. Ghastly and horrible. The first hurdle after I entered was that I stripped naked for a search. And then all the buttons and zippers on my clothes were cut off. Wearing the torn clothes, I felt that I was just like a beggar. After I was taken to the cell, I saw that there were 18 people in the room over 20 square meters. They ate, drank, defecated, and urinated all in it, eating and sleeping beside the commode. As soon as I entered the door, a prisoner shouted at me, Strip! I had no choice but to beg them not to let me take off my underwear. She laughed insidiously and said, Since you're here, you should obey the rules. The cell was simply like hell. The prisoners there were drug traffickers, murderers, embezzlers, and thieves. Among them, there was a head of the cell. They called her Boss. She was the most malicious one. What she mainly did every day was to fix us by various ways. And she took delight in torturing us. In the morning, the second boss there began to teach me the rules. She ordered me to mop the floor twice every day and kept finding other work for me to do. When I made products, I did as many as others and even had to do faster. The prison guards, also like beasts, often willfully fixed us without cause. One of them even threatened. I'm the boss here. I'm not afraid of your telling on me. If you dare, just do it. I'll let you suffer enough. That gang of evil cops was simply lawless and furious in the extreme. There, money makes the mayor go. An official's wife who embezzled a huge sum of money bought special dishes to the boss and sell one every day, so she didn't have to do anything all day long and had others wash her bowl and fold her quilt, and she often gave money to those prison guards. As long as the prisoners gave money to them, they could be beyond the arm of the law. I thank God very much, because there were two sisters who believe in Almighty God here. Seeing each other, we felt like a family. In those days, we, three sisters, relied on God all the time, asking God to give us faith and strength. On January 6, 2013, the cops handling the case had me put on prison clothes and handcuffed and took me back to my hometown police station in the prison van. There I learned that those evil cops had already found my sons and my in-laws, searched my house, and inquired about things in those years. A cop of the local police station said, We've been hunting this woman for years, but failed. When her husband died, she came back and just stayed for one night, making us keep watch for several days in her house in vain. When her son had a heart operation, we went to the hospital but didn't find her. Because of believing in God, she even abandoned her family. We must fix her heart this time. Hearing those words, I cried out in my heart. Don't I want to go home? My husband's death made me extremely grieved. When my son had an operation, I was deeply worried. How I wished to stay by his side. It's not that I don't miss them, but that the government has been persecuting me. I can't go home. The car sped on the road to my home. I cried silently in my heart and kept praying to God. Oh God, I've been away from home for several years. I'll see my family in a while. I'm afraid that I might be weak at the sight of them and might betray you because of family affection. Please help me live out the dignity and backbone of a believer in God before Satan. I only wish that I can stand testimony for you and glorify you. After the prayer, I felt much relieved and got released. 
I knew that God was giving me strength. As the car approached my home, the evil cops intentionally parked it on the roadside and had me lead them to my home in prison uniform and handcuffs. After I got out of the car, looking around the place I had been away from for several years, I felt it familiar yet strange. I saw that the neighbors around standing afar looked and pointed at me. And the sounds of curses and jeers came from behind. Entering my house, I caught a glimpse of my son washing clothes in the yard. But hearing me enter, he didn't even raise his head. I knew that he hated me in his heart. The hair of the old couple was gray. My mother-in-law came out and greeted the evil cops, saying nothing to me. One evil cop asked, Is she your daughter-in-law? She nodded gently. Then they began to threaten my in-laws. She was caught because of distributing the materials of believing in God. If she doesn't cooperate, as long as we make a call to the school, her son will be kicked out at once. And even you old people's substance allowance will be cancelled. All the favorable policies for you will be cancelled. Threatened by the evil cops, the old couple lost countenance and even shivered when speaking. They hurriedly admitted that I had been believing in God outside in those six or seven years. Then the evil cops shouted at my mother-in-law, The party and the people have been caring about you so much in these years. Tell me, is the CCP good or not? She immediately said with fright, Good. Is the present policy good or not? Good. Good. Are these disasters of your family and your son's death caused by your daughter-in-law? Is she the bane of your family? My mother-in-law bent her head and nodded lightly. Seeing that their scheme succeeded, the evil cops pulled me into the room and asked me to look at the various certificates of merit my older son pasted on the wall. And they hypocritically pointed at me and cursed, I've never seen such an inhuman person as you. You have such a good son, and you don't look after him, but go to believe in God? I looked at my son's certificates on the wall and thought, my husband suddenly died in a car accident. My son denied me because his schooling was affected by my believing in God. My in-laws were frightened and threatened because of me. This family has already been broken and heavily damaged. But who is the cause of all these? Is it because I believe in God? At the beginning, when I believed in God, my family was so happy. Later, isn't it because of you, government's persecution? that these disasters come one after another? Isn't it because of you government's rumoring and framing that I can't go back home? At that time, the hatred for those Satans, the devils in my heart, was going to burst out like a volcano about to erupt. I wanted to cry out, Satan, the devil, I hate you. I hate you to my bones and blood. In these years, isn't it you, CCP government, that persecute me so that I can't go back home? Don't I want to stay with my sons and give them motherly love and warmth? Don't I want to live a harmonious and happy life with my family? Why did my husband die? If it wasn't because he believed you, CCP government's rumors that he hindered me from performing duty, persecuted the brothers and sisters, and frenziedly resisted and blasphemed Almighty God. How could he be punished? Isn't my husband killed by you, Satans? Today, my family is brought to ruin, broken up, and burdened with debts. Isn't it caused by you, devilish party? Almighty God says, The prosperity and the survival or extinction of a nation and race 
hinge on whether the ruler of this nation worships God and whether he leads his people to draw near to God and worship God. God will cause men who follow and worship him to prosper and cause men who resist and reject him to decline and perish. If mankind want to have a good destiny, and if a nation wants to have a good destiny, then all mankind have to fall down and worship God and come before God to repent and confess their sins to God. Otherwise, mankind's destiny and destination will be an inescapable disaster. God clearly tells us that only if mankind worship God can they receive God's blessing. Today you, Satan, the devil, instantly change your form and play the positive character to preach. Framing God for the root of my family's misfortunes and putting the blame on me. You're really calling black white and talking nonsense. You gang of evil spirits run counter to right principles and play the trick of a thief crying, Stop thief! You're the real Bane, Scourge, and Jinx. If anyone listens to your lies, he will get into trouble and will encounter disasters. You, CCP government, are the real chief criminal causing my family to be ruined. Living in such a country, how can people have happiness? After the evil cops performed all those, they shouted at me, Go! I turned around and walked out of the house with my head up. I thanked Almighty God for keeping me, so that I saw through Satan's scheme and stood testimony. On January 12th of the same year, I was interrogated the last time. It was still the former two evil cops, and they still asked me to sell out the brothers and sisters. I kept silent, and then they beat me cruelly. I could only keep praying to God, asking him to keep me. Finally, one evil cop said, Let her stay in the prison forever. Torture her like this forever. Let her live worse than death. At his words, I became firm in my heart. I prayed to God and made a resolution. Oh God, I'm willing to commit myself to you. No matter how you manipulate and arrange, I'm willing to obey. Even if I'm in prison for life, I'll follow you and walk to the end. Even if I'm put in hell, I'll praise you. Back to the cell, I just waited to be imprisoned for the rest of my life. Unexpectedly, God made a way out for me. On the afternoon of January 16, they released me. I'm just an ordinary woman who lives in the mountains and didn't even finish primary school. Just because I believe in God, the CCP government resolves to put me to death. I once asked them in an interrogation, what have I done wrong? What law have I broken? What words of opposing the party and the people have I said? Why did you arrest me? Those evil cops had nothing to say in reply. But instead, they roared at me. You can steal or rob, murder or set fire, or prostitute yourself. We won't care. Your believing in God is opposing the CCP. You deserve beating. Are those words of being arbitrary and confusing right and wrong the voice from justice? No, they're the voice from devil. It's right and proper for men to believe in and worship God. As we believe in God and don't wallow in the mire with them, they say that we act against them. This kind of shameless words completely reveal the devil's substance. The CCP government not only frenziedly resists God's work and arrests believers in God, but also fabricates rumors to deceive people. 
so that those who believe its lies all live in the curse and punishment because of resisting God. But they're totally unaware of that. It can be said that all of people's sufferings are caused by the CCP government, this big bane. After experiencing the devil's affliction, I completely saw through the CCP's reactionary substance of being hostile to God and going against heaven, truly tasted God's love, and saw that God's substance is beauty and goodness. Every time I was most distressed and unbearable, God's Word always guided and inspired me within, giving me strength and faith. I could feel that when I suffered, God was accompanying me by my side and keeping me so that I could get out of the difficulties time and again and stand testimony before Satan. God's love is so great. From now on, I'll dedicate my everything to repay God's love and live out a meaningful life for gaining the truth. <laughs>